we're live awesome i'm glad you guys can then join me um yes there wasn't much planning in this live stream it's all been really organic and it's just boshed I and mean, here it is so it was purely by chance and intuition that i found this guy at the time i did and he's in the green room right now and i'm going to bring him in in a sec but yes as the title suggests it's all about council tax a complete nightmare and the only reason i'm doing this is because i've had quite a few messages in the chat from you guys and comments emails private messages everything on twitter the whole thing all about council tax all of a sudden so do you know what it's worth looking into so i've done a little look found this video and whoa literally blown away and one of the reasons why i like this guy for how he's done his video is it's very simple for the average joe to understand okay you do not need to be um a lawyer by profession to understand because it gets broken down okay so we are we've got 200 and so in the chat so we'll just see how that goes for now um let's see where everyone's from here yeah, we've got people from all over that's awesome. Good to see everybody and the moderators as well. It's absolutely awesome. Mm. Right. So what we're going to do, um, I just want to double check. I just want to show you something, right? I'm going to leave this on the screen for a sec and I'm going to let you have a little think about what you're seeing, all right? Really interesting. Um, a guy who I followed a long time ago, Jordan Maxwell. Um, back in 2008, I looked into this stuff about common law, maritime law, or admiralty law, as it's um, otherwise used. There's a lot of things used in the legal profession which refer to the sea. Okay, When you go to court, you go into the dock. Um, literally, when you're born, you go for a birth canal, Okay, birth certificate. There's so many things that ring true with this um way of law and yes i do fully understand that there's people here watching right now who understand that but i would hazard a guess to say the majority of people watching this video literally have no idea what i'm talking about and that's why i wanted to bring this guy in to explain any sort of questions that people have about the legalities of council tax okay so we got 600 or so in the chat i usually wait to a thousand so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to bring the guy in and um introduce you and yes if we've got chance and we've got time we're going to do some q and a's and if this video takes off like i hope it will we will definitely be having this guy back so without further ado here he is this is gavin and uh introduce yourself brother Hi guys, so uh, I'm Gavin, I'm part of uh, a collective, I guess for want of a better word, called Sovereign Empowerment. Um, we're really dealing with everything with regards to true sovereignty. Um, a lot of what we're taking on board obviously is dealing with the council tax, but I guess to put that under an umbrella um, and the legal system that we're in, <laughs> we, uh, we take care of anything debt related. So, you know, typical things like PCN fines, I can talk about that today if you like, um, debt Debt matters with regards to credit cards and loans, we can get rid of all of those. Debt collectors, enforcement agents, utilities, and obviously the big one is council tax. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Yeah, absolutely awesome. And like I said um, just now, it's it's really refreshing to to find someone like yourself who will just say it how it is, you know. And um, if I'm just going to um, chuck this up here, um, there is a reason why um, this whole thing is not challenged by us the citizens of the united kingdom and here it is the term legalese okay language used by lawyers and in legal documents that is difficult for ordinary people to understand difficult for ordinary people to understand and that is the whole reason why they have been getting away with this for so long okay it is you wait till you hear what gavin has to say but it will blow your mind okay if you're new to this you've got no idea that council tax is a genuine scam and there is a legal way which you can get around it okay you're not going to end up in prison etc if you follow these steps and advice you just won't go wrong and you know anyone who wants to challenge this you're absolutely free to do so um 
YouTube censors some of the things that I want to say, but I'm not going to censor the stuff that you want to say. So feel free to say whatever you want, and we'll do our best between us to answer your questions. So, okay then. So the way I'm looking at it, like I said, this is grown organically. Only a few days ago, I found you on here. And it's, the timing seems to be perfect, right? Because April Fool's Day, April 1st, the council tax across the country is going to go up on average 5%. And that, that could be enough to literally just tip people straight into the bin because loads of people, and I know, and I get it, we're all struggling, okay? It's a bloody nightmare what's going on. Cost of living, everything's going nuts, the world's crazy. And the last thing you want to do is to pay extra council tax when you don't really need to pay it at all. So from the average Joe's perspective, um, Gavin, um, just say, I'm going to do it, okay? I'm just going to say for now, I'm going to do it. I wanted to do it on the financial year, which is going to start in April. What's the first thing I need to do to stop paying council tax legally? Yeah, good, good question. Um, I think the first point is to understand why you don't want to pay. Um, and what I mean by that, now, I, I obviously, I don't know anybody in the chat. Um, it's the first time that we've obviously come into your, your group, but there has to be some element of being, and I hate the word awake, but we'll use it, awake to what's going on on the, you know, in the, on the bigger world world stage, right? And how that then is impacting the UK. If you're looking to do it because it's gone up by a few percentage points or whatever, and I just don't want to pay it or I can't afford it, I would say that you're never going to succeed. And the reason you won't succeed is that you, you could have the best bulletproof notices, all the legal comprehension in the world, but they are so corrupt that you will likely capitulate and cave in when the going gets tough. And they know that. So they have their different agendas and strategies that they play to stop it. So you've got to have a, a stronger desire or purpose driving the decision to fight it in the first place. Excuse and I me. think a lot of us, can, you know, at, at a high level say that we're aware of the system and the corruption and what it really represents. And we understand that it's rigged against us. So yeah, fair point. Yeah, yeah. On that basis, the starting point is is really very similar to. But depending on where you are, you could even have liability orders issued against you. It doesn't really matter. Um, I noticed somebody in the chat mentioned the peacekeepers. Nothing new here, and I just want to address that. They're a great bunch. I'm actually going to be with Mark Horn tomorrow in a court case in London, a very wow. big one, dealing with what I'm going to talk about right now. So I'll, I'll kind of finish on that one because there could be. I don't want to actually. I'm not even going to say it. It's a big one tomorrow, okay? And if there's a, the, what we want out of it, obviously we're going to be sharing the news of that outcome. Now, peacekeepers and us, as far as I'm aware, are the only ones that are standing on the same argument. And what we're doing is we're using the system against itself. So if we simplify this system, um, and just kind of touching on the admiralty law thing, um, this isn't law, this is legislation. Legislation is not law, okay? So if we go back in the day, and I'm talking right the way back to when the Bill of Rights came into play, 1688. These are the statutes that we're standing on. Now, I know in the video that you may or may not have watched, we talk about DSARS. We still do that stuff. Everything I've said in that video is true. But we have a very strong legal argument. And it really centers on obligation. Our obligation to perform by those in the system that are telling us we have to perform. Now, what is the performance they're asking us here? Well, you're liable for this thing called council tax, so you need to perform by making a payment. Now, the reality of this system and the reality of admiralty law is it, it's all commerce, and commerce is contract. And contract has certain certainties that have to be met. Now, one of them is obviously acquiescence, compliance. This system runs on um, the scenario of implied consent. So there's assumed consent all of the time. And the thing is, we've all been victims of this and have done this we give power to that very illusion. So we essentially every day when we comply, we're self-incriminating all of the time. We do it to ourselves. So it's being aware of that in the first place and then understanding that if there's an obligation, well, how do we stand on that fact? And it's actually really simple. And that's what I wanted to go through high level now, just to kind of give you an understanding that this is real. Um, am I able to do any screen shares at all for this? So like um, not possible. I've done screen shares myself, but I've never tried it with a guest. So feel free to oh, yeah, um, see how it works. Be able to do this. Let's just try this. Um, and if it comes up just on your little window, I'll see if I can give you the full screen as well. That might make it easier, especially if it's text. Let's see if this 
Can you see that? There we go. Is that showing? Yeah, we've got it there. And um, yeah, I can put it on full screen so we can all see it. There we go. You can still talk, brother. You go for it. Okay. So I can't see myself or anything. So I'm just doing, I'm just going to be saying this. So where I always like to start with this is we've got to have an understanding that there's something called equity. Okay, there's a thing, there's a jurisdiction outside of law that exists called equity. And in fact, before I even show you that, I want to just show you the proof of this. Now, again, some of you may be aware of this. Um, this is for those of you that aren't. We have, court, um, we have courts of chancery, which is this jurisdiction of equity. And I'm just going to show you that they exist. But even now, they're trying to hide this stuff. You can even see the Wikipedia entry. They talk about the courts of chancery in the past tense, as if that these things aren't available anymore. And they now call it a division of the high court. This is absolute BS, guys. The courts of chancery are independent courts in their own right. And they all sit in what is called equity. Now, what is equity? Let me just show you this. Um, that's not what I want to show you. It's like the Mandela effect going on again, isn't it? <laughs> I've got to find the Senior Courts Act again. Where has it gone? Sorry, guys. That's all right, mate. It's cool. Where have I put it? Oh, I've just write it on here. Right. Senior Courts Act. Now, in simple terms, this is the government legislation website. So everything on this legislation website is in play today. It's all on the statute book. It's live and it has authority and power. Okay. And so we are using their system against them. And so the Senior Courts Act really just very briefly outlines all of the rules and different things that the senior courts have got to abide by, but also confirms what the lower courts have to abide by. So any high court precedent has to be followed by the lower courts. And I'm just going to get right to the main point, the law and equity. So they, they have to tell you this truth, because as long as there is the law, there is always going to be equity. So the best they can do is try and hide the fact of its existence. But equity is so powerful. Now, I'm going to just show you this particular section to just support what I'm then going to say, because this will now make sense when I go into further detail. Section 49 basically is used to confirm what the lower courts need to do in this situation. So I'm just going to read it very quickly. Subject to the provisions of this or any other act, every court exercising jurisdiction in England and Wales, which includes these magistrate courts, in any civil cause, I know it's a criminal court if you like, but we are dealing with a civil matter in that court, um, shall continue to administer the law and equity on the basis that wherever there is conflict or variance between the rules of equity and the rules of the common law, we reference the same matter, the rules of equity shall prevail. So it's pretty straightforward stuff there. So let me just get off of this screen share so I can see what I'm yeah, yeah, cool. to. So equity exists. And the idea of equity is it works off of the conscience. Okay, It follows the law, but it provides a remedy based on what is fair and right. Now, if we look at the council tax specifically, we're in a situation where they always hide behind the Local Government Finance Act, which we can also go onto the legislation website and see that it's there and confirm that it's on the statute book. So at first glance, we might say, well, hang on, that's the law, that's legal. Surely they're following a legal process. They are, but it's unlawful. And that's the key difference. And that's what <clears> we're basically <throat> fighting. Because the, the statutes that we use, the Bill of Rights, which I'll show you in a second, essentially confirm that they have to evidence an obligation. And on that basis, we can leverage all of that and confirm everything that they're doing uh, and what it is they're doing is unlawful. And therefore, what they're doing against you is breaching your peace as a very minimum. So I want to just set out the stall and how do we actually kind of catch them in the act, as it were, and then do something about it. I can't see the chat. Is there any? Are there any questions coming up based on what I'm saying so far? Right? Oh, there's, there's there's tons, dude. But um, I was quite interested um when I watched your video when you said about um, you know what actually happens. You get a couple of um, reminder letters, then you get a summons to court. Now the summons thing really did. You know, I do believe that a lot of people, I would say the majority, will will fold at that point. Um, can you yeah. go into a little bit about um the <laughs> the fake summons should we say and then yeah, go into yeah. what you said about um the court actually being hired and all of his stuff because if you're not aware guys that will blow you away I guarantee it yeah absolutely what i'm going to need to do before i do that is i want to just explain something called equitable estoppel yeah yeah that is what we use to deal with the summonses okay sure 
because the, the fact is if we like we know everything to be true right we know that this is a fake summons and everything else the problem with the system being so corrupt if you go to court you're never going to get a judge to agree with you because they're always going to by default side with the system because that's what they have to do so you've mm. got to be prepared and have the facts there so that the judge can't get out of what it is you're presenting and therefore they rule in the way that we want them to rule so i'll come into that in a second so okay let me just do a very quick screen share screen share i should say again and i just want to show you this uh equitable estoppel here we go so remember we're using equity all the time for what we do and we're going to serve some notices that put those individuals into something called equitable estoppel and that is basically where a court will not grant a judgment or other, other legal relief to a party who has not acted fairly for example having made false representations as summons concealing material facts from the other party now the concealing of material facts will occur once we've served the first notices and they then carry on because they can't get past the legal argument and we're going to start doing desiring they have no alternative but to start concealing <clears throat> so equitable estoppel is very powerful so how do we then stand on that and then start dealing with these summonses so i just want to very quickly explain that one then we can go into it so this system works on fictions it's all corporations right again you probably know this stuff but i just want to clarify again um corporations the council doesn't exist it's, it's only on paper it has no mind or conscience therefore it cannot act or perform only the employees the men and the women of that fiction have the ability to do that and it's those men and women and also those that work in the courts that we're after because they're all liable because order following is not an excuse and that's exactly what's actually going on here so if order following is not an excuse and we're all equal under the law and no one is above the law and that's the absolute truth and that can be confirmed by these statutes i'm going to show you in a second then how can they be following orders if we notify them notice them of the facts of the matter so the first thing you do whatever stage you're in whether you've got orders or not it doesn't matter you serve the ceo you serve the head of council tax and you serve the head of legal they're the three main parties. And the reason we do that is we may not necessarily need to go to court to get a win. I haven't done that and I haven't, I haven't paid for three years. So it's about understanding the rules of the game and putting pressure on these people. Those three people, all of them can simply push a button and make the whole thing go away. So if you put them under enough pressure and they understand that their head's on the chopping block and you give them a little exit, and I like to push them into a corner and give them yeah. an exit. And the exit is generally push the button and we'll go away right? i like it when you touched on them when when they're in that that fake court and you say um are you under oath and it all goes quiet that's awesome yeah, <laughs> oath, say, yeah. Oath things i'll, I'll, I'll come yeah. into that as well actually so what we're going to do we're going to serve this main notice now again i won't bore you with all of the details in fact i could probably i can show you one actually if you want me to is that yeah go for it yeah yeah um let me just screen share again because there will be a lot of people watching this on the replay as well. So this this is going to grow and grow and grow, I guess. So people can pause it and rewind it. And I mean, this is, this is one we've drafted today. Um, so what we do is we we every case is unique, right? As much as it's all council tax, I better not show that bit. Everything is unique. So we take we pick it up from where it's at. Now, this one had to start off as a rebuttal to what this individual would have been doing first. Okay. But what we do, I won't go through everything, is we outline all of the material facts. We provide all of the legislation, the case law, everything. It's a pretty hefty notice. I mean, this one's about 20 odd pages long. So it's all there, all of the case law, all from history. Now, the main point of that is not to bamboozle them with a load of gump. It's to confirm the facts of the law as pertains to what it is they are doing. And so if I serve that on any one of you, and then you decided to ignore that, you can't later claim, oh, I didn't know that's your decision to remain ignorant that's your decision to ignore the notice you've been served so you always want to serve them first now what happens is this they are going to ignore it because they're all ignorant of a lot of this stuff and that's not the that point is it you actually have to make the first move yeah you've got it you've got to serve them because that covers you for what comes later and yeah. they then realize this later by the way then they, they try and backtrack so that notice if i've given you all of the facts and you've ignored it and you're in equitable estoppel and you carry on you've breached the estoppel that causes you a problem so now when you get the summons we can evidence that notice to the court and say this thing needs to be set aside the hearing can't happen 
and the hearing can't happen because if that was say you um, as, as the CEO and you've breached it, well, you've now breached my peace. And that summons is evidence of fraud by misrepresentation. Yeah. And so now we're getting no, into good. defenses. So you actually mm. want them to keep going because all they're doing is digging a hole that we, yeah, yeah. we, we can help them. Pretty carry much. It's, so there's no panic. So to your point, there is no need to panic with the summons. Why? It is not core issue. The council issued that document. There's nothing legal about it. It's just a piece of paper with a bit of stuff written on it. Mm. So the fear thing comes in because we just don't know this stuff. But that's the simple point. Now, the trick is when you've got this court issued summons that, sorry, the council issued summons that the court don't even know about, when you write to the court to have it set aside, you start to cause all sorts of problems. They don't understand because they haven't got a copy of it, have they? No. And, and so part of the challenge here then, well, not the challenge, part of the strategy is to actually force the court to behave as the court should behave because they're so used to being in collusion with the council. You know, they commonly yeah. just send emails back and forth. Oh, what we should do here? You do this one, you know, do that. They get they get ex, um, advice from the council as to how to handle the council tax matters. Yeah. That can't happen. I mean, that, that is absolutely um, jailable offences that are going on there. And I'll, I'll yeah, tell yeah. you what we've got right now, actually. What they just get very complacent, don't they? It's like I'm a yeah, tag team and no one challenges them, really. And they just seem yeah. to get away with everything. They've done it for so long that they think that that's actually how you're allowed to behave. Um, we've got one right now whereby um, we were putting pressure on the court and the council to obtain the liability orders, which obviously don't exist in hard copy. And we we're putting so much pressure on them. The, count, the court was actually um, uh, liaising with the council back and forth on emails, asking the council what to do. And then um, we, we put in to appeal the actual... Um, Someone just no, put that one there. I don't. No, no, of course it doesn't. No. I, I did this in 2020, late 2020, I got mine done. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, um, the, 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 the council was basically, uh, sorry, the courts forwarded an email string between them and the council, just evidencing all of the collusion. Mm. So, okay, then, so, so basically, um, it's up to the individual. I, I don't want to get into person and persona because that's probably going to be too much. A lot of people are, are struggling with this info as it is. I mean, in fact, someone's put on here, my head hurts. And yes, it's designed to, because like I said, when we go back to what we saw earlier with the term legalese, it's designed to be difficult for ordinary people to understand. So don't feel bad about it, guys, because it's by design that this is um, the process of what happens. So what Gavin's trying to say, basically, for the individual, you have to strike the first blow, as it were, for want of a better term, just to let them know the top three people okay you let them know what's going on and then you wait for the process and the process would be two three four maybe reminder letters then you will get issued that court summons but not from the court from the council it's a different thing there's no crest or any magistrate design at all on that summons and there is no signature now if any of you guys have ever been to court and you've had a genuine court summons you must remember that you saw the magistrate court logo on the top at the very least and signed. Not the case, is it, Gavin? The summons Sorry, is I'll, absolutely. I'll the slide, but it's a bit delayed. There. Yeah, no, you're right. It's it's absolutely illegitimate. It's not court paperwork. Even mm. to the point, the liability orders, right? In courts, every court has to have like legal forms. It can't happen. You can't just do a piece of paper and then send something out. It's got to all be done officially. They removed the legal form for liability orders in 2003. That's right. So how, how are they issuing yeah. liability orders? And this, mm. is, this is where you can actually catch them out again, because mm. the council will just provide you a document with the liability order written on it. And go, there you go. There's your liability order. Mm. And most of us think that that's real. If you go to yeah. a court, they can't provide you one. They literally can't yeah. provide you one. Now, what you can get mm. is an ex certified extract of their court register. It's the only way to pr prove the judgment. But even then, they won't sign the, the register. So it's never mm. certified. So if you push hard enough, you can confirm that there is no judgment in existence. If there's no mm. judgment, how are you liable? Mm. Exactly. I'm just, I'm trying to give, like, um, I don't want to say the term idiot's guide, but I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. So you let them know, is there like a template letter that people can sort of download and just like sign at the bottom and send that to, what, the CEO of the council, is it? And, and a couple of other guys, was it? 
Now, this is this is the downside, right? We, they've done a great number on us with this system, as you know, right? And and the problem is, if you're going to do it and you want to do it on your own, um, I can recommend the Peacekeepers, and I probably can give you a, a link to those guys. I've got no affiliation with them. They're just a great bunch of people, yeah. and they stand on the same argument that we do. And a lot of their documentation is free, and they're very good at teaching. And the point I'm trying to make is that there's no quick route to this. If you're going to do it, you've got to become a student yourself and take ownership for yourself and know who you are and decide. Empower right. yourself. It's, and that's hence we call it sovereign empowerment. Like you have mm. to know what it means to be truly sovereign and to live in the private and not in this public realm. And therefore, part of that means that, you know, you're going to get into a bit of rough and tumble with these different organizations and you're going to get a fat lip now and then. But that's part mm. of being a sovereign and standing yeah. up for the matrix, you know. Um, but it can be done and it is being mm. done. And we, you know, and I'll extend an offer. If you want to book a call with us and chat about it, we can do that. We can even help you hands on. In fact, a lot of yeah. what we are doing right now is helping hands on with people. Yeah. Um, it's th what we found in, in that is that the, the journey to learning is so long and there's so many rabbit holes to go down that we found it that if we can help hands on, we can condense the training and actually use your situation as the case study, as the training material. So every notice mm. that we write, we have a session where we go through it so you understand what's going on, we answer your questions, and we walk you through the journey whereby if we're going to court, we'll even go to court with you. Mm. You know, tomorrow's one's a big one. Um, I think we've got about 20-odd people going there as witnesses. Wow. So we, we want to show them that we are waking up, that we are taking this seriously, and you're not going to be pulling any bullshit because everyone's a witness and everyone's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you I know it's interesting because I was I was making some notes from that video um, that that you put up, and oh, it's crazy. Um, like Dorit Debits um, is someone actually said somewhere on a video that I saw earlier. Now, if you set up your um, council tax via direct debit, is that an actual way of consenting? Is that a yes or a no? I didn't know the answer myself. No, I don't think it is really, is it? Because there has to be. Oh, what was it? It was um full disclosure, so that's both sides, equal consideration, lawful terms and conditions, and mutual consent. Them four things have to be done correctly. And Correct. it's all done with smoke and mirrors, isn't it? Because do you remember actually ever agreeing anything when you signed up to pay the council tax? That's exactly it. In fact, yeah. that's probably a good segue to just explain, very quickly explain how this obligation thing works because it's all based you know what is an obligation in the legal system it is a contract it's a form of legally binding contract right morally or legally so we're obviously using legal so back to what you were just saying there about the certainties now if you look at six now bear with me guys because this is the important bit now we all need to know this because this is for everything not even just the council tax and how you get out of all legislation it all works on consent okay now if they have to evidence an obligation, how do we stand on that statement? It's very simple. Back in 1688, after we came out of that tyrannical reign of King James, we obviously wanted, they wanted to do something whereby we didn't have this situation where you could have a tyrannical monarch again. So they needed to create a separation of powers with Parliament and the monarchy. And at that point then, right, the monarchy just gave their royal stamp of approval, the royal assent to all this legislation being passed. And the idea being is that we had the first act of William and Mary... 1688 okay um created the two fictions of parliament now the two fiction of parliament are very simple you've got the building clearly a fiction it's not alive right we can see it and parliament assembled which essentially is the 650 mps that we allegedly elect mm, no, no. to represent the will of the people that is obviously not happening right but here's the truth of it this legal system was set up and the foundational elements of this system has always been we're all equal under the law nobody is above the law and if that's the case which it is provably so how can these mps these men and women in parliament assembled have any other rights than any other man and women on the land to assert an obligation upon us they do not now if they yeah. don't these council workers definitely don't if they don't the police don't nobody using legislation in the public domain has any right to assert that obligation and that is confirmed in the first act of William and Mary, which is the contract between Parliament and the monarchy, the Bill of Rights, which is the contract right. between the monarchy and the people, there's one key part of the Bill of Rights that states that nothing can be done to the prejudice of the people. Given the council tax is unlawful, I would suggest they're breaching the Bill of Rights. They're your constitutionally protected rights. 
And just as a side note, if you look at all these other things that are being done in the country, 99% of it breaches the Bill of Rights. And we don't know about it because they bury it. The final mm. parts of this then are the coronation oath and the, um, the act of settlement, which binds the whole thing together. Now, we mentioned promissory oaths earlier on. So I've just kind of come into that final piece. Uh, <clears throat> the coronation oath essentially gives the power to the promissory oaths. They, they wouldn't be able to exist without it. Now, in the legal system, all judges, all court agents have to swear their promissory oaths. And the simple truth is this. If you can evidence those statutes properly in a defence in court, no judge can go against it because to do so would be to breach their oath and that would be perjury and that's jailable. Yeah. So keeping this really simple. So the key to this then is understanding and fully comprehending those four statutes, which I can mm. definitely show you the links with after this. If you yeah. can get your head around those, you win. Yeah, it is insane. And incidentally, guys, if anyone wants to see um, the video which Gavin done, which is the one that I saw, which led to all this, it's in the link below this video. You can watch it anytime you want. It goes straight to it. It's about, what, half an hour or long or something like that. And it does. It breaks down this process. Now, going into that a little bit, um, what he said about the liability order. Now, there's a certain thing um, that a court should know if it was done properly. They should have copies of this. And this is where we go into a little bit of the GDPR stuff. And the 2018, I think it was, there was an act that was passed. And all of that sort of stuff means you contact the court directly to ask because it's your right based on what happened in 2018. It's your right to be provided with that information. And guess what? It simply can't provide the information because do you know why it doesn't exist and that goes back to the central on of the scam once again doesn't it mate yeah it's absolutely true the, the, the truth of these magistrate courts if we want to be really honest about it is they are unlawful in themselves everything that goes on in a magistrate court is unlawful um because we're meant to be at we meant to have the right to full and public hearings we mean to even have jury trials i mean none of this stuff exists in these magistrate courts um, a lot of the time what happens in a magistrate's court is an agent of court is meant to apply their mind to the matter at hand. OK, now what's really happening is bulk processing. And that's mm. that there's no way someone's applying their mind. And by default, that then is completely unlawful. OK, so because they're bulk processing, they can't record on the record properly. All courts are meant to be courts of record. The magistrate's courts, they'll tell you, is a court of record, but you can never obtain a transcript of any hearing. The only thing they're meant to record is the judgment. But you can't record bulk judgments because they're done in bulk and they're done in the hundreds or every other week, right? Mm. So there's where you catch them out. If you know how they do what they do and then you know the rules that they're meant to follow, it's very easy to unpick it all. And mm. then what starts to happen is, like, if you desire a court nowadays, you might get them trying to block it, saying that we can't provide you the... We have some of the information they tend to say, Right. Which well, how have you got any of it? But we have some. So they try mm. and get out of not of a non-compliant situation. But we can't give you it because this is an active case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. It's, it's a, like they're starting to do this. Right. So you just laugh at that because you can tell what's going on. They haven't got anything and they don't want to fall foul of running foul of the Data Protection Act. Mm, they can't show that card, can they? They can't do it. Now, mm. the Data Protection Act is so powerful because yeah. there's a section in there, section 173, that makes it a criminal offence that any company or person, I'll say that because it's legalese, yeah. um, person to block your access to your data, to obstruct your access or erase your data. So 99% of all of these organisations are doing all of this stuff unlawfully all of the time. So mm. if you think about a DSAR, just decide, and this is a good one, because you can just, I started with DSARs and a really good tool just to practice mm. and get your head around it all. Mm. That's a data subject access request, yes. if anyone wanted to know what a DSAR actually is, right? And, and, and the general premise of a DSAR is your property. You own your data, and your data can be as simple as your name on a piece of paper squiggled down. And if another corporation owns that, then they have by rights, if you, if you DSAR them, they have to provide that back. So think about that. If we understand mm. what should be happening, we can craft questions around those things and i'll give you one of them this kills the councils this is where it gets beautiful guys seriously these are yeah. the councils for this because what they're doing is unlawful so remember i said that they're always colluding with the courts and there's commonly emails back and forth all the time 
if you decide the court, they would claim, oh, it's an active case, blah, 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 we can't do it. The council doesn't have the same luxury. So if you're putting pressure on, and you, you can often do things to get them to react, knowing that they're going to screw things up, then backing, banging the DSAR. And you want to ask something like this. All of your data and information, name your name, your straw man name, contained within all email correspondence and or paper copy between any employee or non-employee, name the council and then name any other organization you believe your data has been passed to. They can't comply. And this is where you can get them because Break if they comply, they're going to literally be providing you all the proof you want of the collusion behind the scenes, right? So they're going to obstruct you. And what they're banking on is that you don't know how to bring a claim. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't. They just get templates and they do it and then they get stuck. But if you know how to bring a claim, they're running foul of Section 173. Now, you can go in for like a five grand claim, seven and a half grand claim, depending. And why? Distress caused, um, mental health issues that I'm suffering, blah, blah, blah. You can mm. work out whatever narrative you want. But non-compliance to a DSA is a very serious thing. So if you're attacking the courts and the councils on different angles with DSARs, let me just tell you this one. We live in a commercial system. We know this. Everything's all about fines. You know, pay us, pay us, pay us. We'll bankrupt. We'll, we'll strip your assets. Or we can, whatever's done to us, we can do to them. Mm. And it costs an organization, forget the councils, it costs an organization roughly £100 per DSAR to administer it. If you get creative with your questions, it's going to start costing them more. And if it costs them a situation where they can't comply and they know it, and they know there's a claim coming off the end of it, Think about it this way. If yeah. they're coming after you for a thousand, and you're now costing them way more than a thousand to deal with you, do you think it's likely they're going to give up and leave you alone? Probably yes. Highly so likely. Think about the tools that you're using. A lot can be done without courts just by being creative about how you're doing it. Hmm. So they're just the DSAs, just get creative with questions. Who's got your data? Are they holding it unlawfully? And what questions can you ask to start getting access to it that causes them problems? Yeah, it's bonkers, mate, and it? it really, really is. I mean, like I said um, earlier, you know, so one of the weird things which a lot of people just don't understand, what the council literally do is they hire a room in a magistrate's court and do just council tax related stuff on that day in that room. And like you said on your video, you know, the people who are handling the cases, if you want to use a better term, they're not under oath and because they're not under oath this is not legally binding so it's just a facade if you want to call it something else but that's the fact isn't it and then you throw into it's a fake um summons because it's not issued from the court it's issued from the council again another fake thing so literally what they're doing is they are backing themselves into a corner and if you know what you're doing like you said and what you so you can literally use their rules and stuff against them if you know how the system works and once you understand how that works you can literally run with it can you you could literally do very well out of all of this not that that's the point but the point is we shouldn't really be paying for this in the first place because we've already got fuel tax tax on alcohol tax on cigarettes tax on everything you can think of and again they're going to be putting council tax up again on april fool's day which is hilarious five percent you know and like i said that five percent might be enough to literally tip some people and families over the edge because it's crazy it really is so like i said guys if you need more information the link um to gavin's um channel um and that video which i watched which is awesome i strongly advise everyone watch that video it, it explains everything about how this system works and it does seem very complicated and i know i've seen loads of comments saying i haven't got a clue what you guys are talking about and it is difficult because we are trying to present to you um, what goes on truthfully, but trying to use, not use the words which I use, which is all legalese. So trying to use alternative words is very difficult, mate, isn't it? That's part of the problem, I guess. Yeah, it is. I was just looking at some of the comments there. Mm. Um, so, yeah, no, it, it's, it's a minefield. And, and the only thing I can really say, guys, is if you're awake to something and you want to make a stand, it's really just about commencing the journey. Mm. don't look at winning in in day one don't look at in fact i lost multiple times in the beginning and it was the losses that actually taught me everything i needed to know to start winning you know mm. and well, that's actually life isn't it i mean 
I've done the same yeah. thing. I mean, I come out here, just gambled everything. You know, sold everything I had, made as much money as I could, and just come out here. And from anyone else thinking of doing something like that, be like, you've got to have a plan. You've got to have money. You can't just do that. I said, no, get out here and then make up as you go along. And I've always said to people, I said, the best way to learn is by mistakes. Okay. So these, um, this game, I suppose, because it is a game when you look at it broadly. Okay. Um, yes, if it goes to court, something goes wrong, you don't fully understand it, you're going to get penalised, but you're definitely not going to be going to prison over it, okay? So you're going to learn what happened, research further. And I know someone very, very well who lives down in Brecon who has done exactly the same thing. He doesn't pay council tax, vehicle tax, no tax, pretty much, because he knows the system. And again, he had to go down that road. He went to court a few times and failed, but he learned. And it's pretty much they know the guy in Brecon and the police have pretty much been told to leave him alone because he will take them apart with the law. And let me tell you this, how many police officers fully understand the law? I wouldn't want to guess how many actually know the law inside out. Now, there's probably more citizens in the UK that know really how the law works than there are police officers. That would be my guess. So when you go to court, you really got to know what you're doing. And there's certain trump cards that you can play, Gav, isn't there? Which will literally just put them into a corner and every guy like, ah, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. Um, adjourn the court or whatever it is they're going to do to get out of jail, right? It's nuts. <laughs> You've got to, yeah, the, the, the thing with the courts, like just, I know, I know it sounds silly, but have fun with it. Like don't feel any intimidation. <laughs> Everything that is done can be undone. So there's no... Yeah fear of even having a judgment go against you you can appeal it and undo it you know that the road mm. is long so it doesn't and it, it's just always accepting that you're probably going to lose a lot learn from it keep moving on right enjoy yeah. the experience and then start you know obviously you know you guys hopefully come and see what we're about and um, we'll share the link to the channel if you come and join our telegram group the chat group's quite fast moving but there's quite a lot of knowledgeable guys there and they're there to help people like you guys learn if you're just starting the journey we can point you in different directions show you the sort of things to start looking into and if you want to start going to court we will even come with you you know so mm. just get into it get in the fight and have some fun with it That's what it's it is isn't it i mean it's, it's pretty much like um it's the same sort of road as um, knowing your rights pretty much i mean you can maybe you can go to a protest and the police officer approaches you and says this this and this and if you know the law you can say well you know i'm not breaking any laws i'm legally okay by doing what i'm doing and standing here or whatever it is there's so much to learn but people just don't really want to learn how the system works and unfortunately that's how a lot of people end up just getting steamrolled i mean they are actually taking so much money from the people of this country from taxation it's insane it really really is i remember someone looking into this a long time ago and it said basically the five percent out of everything that you've ever had is not taxable everything else is so it's so hard to sort of have um, a decent lifestyle you know have a roof over your head um, a nice warm home in the winter maybe a family holiday it's not too much to ask because a lot of people do work hard for it and yet you know everything that you work really hard for is just going on time trying to understand this legalese nonsense and taxes from your money that you've earned paying in stuff which will it inadvertently come back to bite you on the ass? I mean, lots of you guys have already watched the videos that I've done about 15 minute cities. I've exposed um, the money and followed the money of how that all works. Lots of pension funds from all around the UK are funding these 15 minute neighborhoods and 15 minute cities. And a lot of it is coming from council tax because do you remember when I showed all of the screenshots of all of the councils? It's pretty much every single council in the UK is funding 15 minute cities. And like I said, if there's a way to stop or limit their funding, they physically won't be able to do what they plan to do, which is a tyrannical road. And the end game is just to enslave everyone, have everyone jammed in these horrible little neighborhoods or cities, and the rich and the powerful can literally have the whole run of the whole of the countryside. And we're gonna be living in noise controlled, God knows what going on in the air, electromagnetic stuff. It's going to be a nightmare. And like I said, the only way to slow it down or to stop it is to sort of cut their funding. And like I said, so many people have said to me, stop paying council tax. But it's not as easy as just 
cancelling your direct debit and just running away. I've had seen I've seen people comment on videos that said I've done it five years ago and I've just ignored everything. All of the summons, all of the letters, completely ignored it. They've even sent bailiffs around to the house. That's another thing, Gav. I mean, like you said, the intimidation factor. I mean, when you I've been to court a long time ago, right? It's good because you get a chance to wear a suit. It's really awesome, right? But when you go in there, I can understand the intimidation. But when you look at it, they're just people in a room wearing costumes. It's an act. It really, really is an act. And if you look at it from that perspective, they want you to be in fear. They want you to be compliant. You walk into that room knowing what you know and knowing it's all a big game and you know what to say, when to say it, or what not to say, they're going to go, ah, We've got someone here who knows what they're doing. This isn't going to be easy. So why should it be easy for them? Like you said, it's all about empowering yourself, right? And people need to start at least looking into it, yeah? I think, yeah, you're bang on the money there with empowerment. Um, in fact, I want to address a quick question. Somebody in the chat said, why don't you hire a solicitor? And I think it's a really good question that mm. also dovetails into the empowerment piece because the answer to that question is really simple. Um, and again, I'm not talking negatively about any solicitors per se in their personal capacity, other than the profession that they're in. And the profession that they're in is of the system. OK, this is why they practice law. If you went and hired anybody else that practices to anything, would you hire them? No. Mm. Solicitors practice law. And I can tell you this now, back in the early 70s, they stopped teaching constitutional law to solicitors. So this generation... There's no clue about the Bill of Rights or any of that stuff. And that's mm. actually why it's quite easy to get around it when you get into the courts with it, because they, not even the judges understand it. The other thing about a solicitor is they're of the Bar Guild. This is all like Rothschild stuff. This is all of the system. It's all satanic. It's all evil. It's all there mm. to basically take from us, the people. And if you get a solicitor, what you're doing, what do they do? They represent you or do they represent you? What they're doing is representing your fiction, your fictional name, your straw man to the court, to the bar guild, because they want to access mm. your trust fund, your SESPV trust. That's what's mm. really going on. So yeah. never, ever, ever get a solicitor because they will not win. They, they are stuck within the framework of the system. And there's no mm. way in the world they'd stand on constitutional law. And certainly there's no way in the world they could sort of combine that with what I'm talking about with fictions. As an yeah. example. I'm dealing with a, cl a claim right now. This is my own claim that's going through. Um, this is for utilities. And it's all about fictions because a fiction <clears> called Eon <throat> has taken me to court. So it's taken my fiction to court. And the way I'm dealing with this is I'm actually switching out my fiction, which is a corporation, to another mm. corporation called My Name Limited, which <laughs> is a limited company, okay, of which I'm not a director. So yeah. oh, if well. you want to play yeah. the corporation game, you can play the corporation game in their system too. So just Remember in capital letters, letters folks. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. And yeah. they've done it all on this as well, capital letters. Mm. So Yeah, absolutely. I'll okay. say this also, when, when you do the, the council tax, um, they enroll you in a council scheme, a council tax scheme. Now, just look at the verbiage. Scheme, an unorganised plan for doing something, especially something dishonest or illegal, that will bring a good result for you. Honestly, I mean, I could spend hours showing you all of these words and what they actually mean. And it literally is a game and they are using words because they know how to use them. OK, I mean, when you look at the word con in contract, etc., that go for go get your dictionary and go to the letter C and go to con and look through them all. All of that sort of stuff is crazy. Now, I pulled this off the government website earlier, and we're going to go through some of this right now. Look at this. This is what happens, right? Pay council tax arrears. Contact your council as soon as possible if you're struggling to pay the council tax. You can choose to spread the payments, blah, 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 blah. Okay. The council may give you a one-off discount if you pay what you owe. Okay. So... We're going to, if I can find it, go on to the next section. If you miss council tax payments, okay, so what you're going to get is you're going to be getting a reminder notice, right, giving you seven days. If you don't pay, it just goes on and on and on the process, okay. 
And look at this, you'll get a maximum of two reminder notices in a financial year. This runs from April Fool's Day to March 31st the next year. Your council will send you a final notice saying you must pay the whole year's council tax if you miss a payment for the third time. And look at this in big, bold, intimidating letters with the beautiful explanation mark as well. If you don't pay your whole year's council tax within seven days, the council may take legal action to get the council tax that you owe, okay? Like I said, it's very, very intimidating. And all you have to do is just look at it, okay? Now look at this, this is interesting. Legal demands for payment. Your council can ask a magistrate for a liability order. Liability order, you need to check that out, guys, because this is one of the linchpins which you can use to your advantage. Like Gavin rightly said about data protection and GDPR, okay? You have a right to see that. And they can't actually produce a liability order from the court, okay? If you owe them unpaid council tax, this is a legal payment, demand for payment. The council's legal cost example for hiring a lawyer may be added to the money that you owe. You're allowed to go to the court, well, thank you very much, to give your reasons for not paying if you want. And again, they just give you like a flannel with citizens of voice and all that's going to do is just bog you down in more of the game. OK, now it gets more sinister. It just escalates as you go through these levels. OK, so playing a computer game, it just gets harder. If you still don't pay, OK, look at what they're saying here. The council can apply to take money from for following benefits, employment and support allowance, income support, job seekers allowance, pension credit, and the final killer, universal credit. This means you don't have enough money to pay other bills. You can ask your council to make smaller payments, etc., etc. okay? So it does look like they can literally just take it out of your income, if you want a better term. Now, this is also sinister, which a lot of people are going to get freaked out. And what you so because this is a physical thing, literally on your doorstep, okay? Bailiffs. Your council can send bailiffs, <laughs> enforcement agents, okay, to seize your property if there's no other way to recover your debt. They will tell you how much you owe before the bailiff visits you. The bailiff's cost can be added. I mean, really, they're just literally just pouring water onto this ocean, aren't they? Court. Your council can take you to court if you don't pay the money that you owe and the bailiffs can't recover enough property to cover it. The court will consider whether you can afford to pay the bill. So they literally come around and evaluate, evaluating things to see if you can actually pay. You have a valid reason not to pay. Wow, look at this. You can be sent to prison for up to three months if, and it's a big if, the court decides you don't have a good enough reason not to pay your council tax and you refuse to do so. It's just absolute fear porn on steroids. And if you still think this is all um, a bit strange, well, look at this. Just doing a little search online and guess what? Every city council in the UK is a private limited company. Let that sink in. It's a private limited company. It's an enterprise. It's a business. And they're in the business of literally collecting money. And if you don't believe me, check this one out. And Oxford seems to be big at the moment. So I decided to use this because of their 15 minute city protest. Well done, Oxford, by the way. Look at this Oxford City Council. And if you really want to, you can go into the names of the people who have belonged to this. Now, look at this in 2021. So this is very recent, OK? And they're using the Local Government Act of 1972 and the legal form via council, OK? And that indeed is obviously registered here in the United Kingdom. Mental, mate, isn't it? The amount of people that literally just see that yeah. for the first time and go, whoa. Just to put some put some minds at rest in case there are anyone panicking about going to prison and, and whatnot. Um, yeah, yeah. Nobody has ever been arrested 
by the police for council tax and taken to the prison cells. Cannot Not happen. one single person. Never happened. In fact, I was, this was about two, probably, when was it? About Novemberish. I was on the phone to someone we're helping. They've been doing this stuff for a while anyway. Um, it actually, he phoned up when it happened. They turned up to arrest him, to take him to the, to the, the local cells, right? But it wasn't the police. They were bailiffs with all their stuff removed in their black um, vests and stuff. And um, he was like, what do I do? And I said, just tell them. I was obviously on the phone. Tell them you're going to phone the police and double check there's a warrant. And um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Nice. That's, what, that's what he would. And as he was doing it, they all buggered off. Yeah. Um, that's what I say. It's not what to say when to say it, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. There's yeah. No, there's no warrant. They can't. You could never get issued a warrant for council tax. It's a debt. You can't yeah. go to this prison for debts. So where they get you is contempt of court. Now that's different. Mm. So full foul of that. But if you're obviously smart about it, you cannot go to prison for for not paying council tax. It can't happen. Mm. It's not happening, is it? No. And um, yeah, I'm and just going to go through the comments because I haven't really seen. Yeah, look at this. Look, <laughs> they're not bailiffs. They're just gangsters. Pretty much. At the end of the day, you know, they wake up like everyone else. They put their clothes or the uniform on. They go out there, they're told what to do, they collect money or goods or whatever it is, and they go home and they go out to the pub or do whatever they do. They're just people. And that's part of the problems we had in the Second World War. I mean, what did you hear about the Jews and stuff? I was just doing my job. And like I say, everyone's taking part in this big game. And life pretty much is a ride, you know, like um, old matey boy said a long time ago, and you can get off the ride whenever you want. And this is just one little thing into it, okay? So yeah, have you been checking the comments as well, mate? Because there's what, yeah, there's nearly two thousand people there earlier. <laughs> That's nuts. Saw, yeah, it's quite a few. Um, so just the one one more thing on the the bailiffs or the enforcement agents. There's a yeah. difference between a high court bailiff and these enforcement agents. They get out for council tax, um, and the simple fact is they have no power, none, <clears> other <throat> than what you would give them. So you don't have to give them a name, and if they <clears> don't <throat> even know who you are, how are they doing anything? Right, mm. they, they, and that's why they ask you who you are first of all. Right, you're, you're yeah. committing and contracting. You're entering a contract, aren't you? There you go. So simply don't answer the door. They can't take your car. They can't do anything. That's then. Do you know what this is? This is um, going off topic a little bit, but it's very similar. Um, a while ago, a few years ago, me and my partner moved into this new property. We was only there for a week, and we thought, right, we better go and take you know me, my partner, and my son to the local doctor to register. Okay, first time we've ever been there. We parked up in the car park. We went in there, blah, 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 blah. They said, um, here's a form. Um, come back and bring it back tomorrow. Yeah, no problem. So we went home. We went through the form. We filled it all. We went back the next day or the day after, whenever it was. We handed the form in. She checked it all. Yeah, no problem at all. And then we made an appointment to see the doctor for the initial, you know, joining, I guess. Unbeknownst to myself, I get um, two parking fines sent to me. Now, I had no idea that the car park in the, the GP surgery was run by Euro Parks, okay? And I'm like, whoa, how the hell can you have... I mean, I didn't know, but you had to go into the GP surgery, you had to type in your registration plate into the big pad on the screen, you know, within five minutes of entering the car park or something daft. Okay? I had no idea, we just walked past it, went in there. So I thought, whoa, this is crazy. And I said to my partner, I said, I think it's out of order. I don't really want to pay that. So I went straight back to um, the doctors to say about it. Have you ever read this happen before? Oh, yeah, we, have, we get it all the time. It's a nightmare. Um, just contact them, tell them, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, okay. So I go out and thought about it. I spoke to my partner. You know, my partner's a little bit more streetwise than I am. Okay, She said, um, someone that she saw a long time ago, she had a very similar thing. He said, do not reply. I said, what? I said, yeah, just ignore it. I said, if you start ignoring it, that fine is going to go up and eventually you're going to have someone at the door and it could get really crazy. And she says, as soon as you reply to that letter, you are inadvertently entering a contract. Dude, she was absolutely right. Okay, so I took her advice. I did not do anything about it. I had a few letters, or even a photograph on this letter of my vehicle entering the car park. Okay, I had a total of about 10 letters over about six months or so then it completely stopped and it was years ago never paid a penny so it's the same sort of thing but on a very small level obviously is do not enter the contract so by doing that nothing happened this is a little bit different and it's a lot more in depth i mean i do have people say to me they just completely refuse the whole thing they never um they cancelled the direct debit and just left it 
forgot all about it. And every year they get visits and stuff and they just say, yeah, whatever. And nothing happens. You can go down that road, but would you guess that it's probably risky doing that that way? It depends on the situation. Um, uh, I mean, every, everything, everything is unique and everyone thinks you need to look at every situation independently. So where can you, where would ignoring uh, letters actually maybe be a viable strategy? So again, I'm not telling you guys what to do. Um, mm. I'm just saying what I've done and I know other people have done in certain situations. But, you know, if you have self-assessment and you want to maybe stop doing that sort of stuff, that would be a good example of where perhaps if you decided not to file a self-assessment form and HMRC were, HMRC were sending automated letters out to you and you decided not to reply, it's very likely nothing's going to come of it. And mm. why is that? Because we even know in the, the mainstream media now that they're hemorrhaging staff Morale's really low. The debt burden's increasing. They're going on strike. They cannot keep up with what's going on. 99% of people that are not paying self-assessment are well under the radar in terms of the bigger ticket stuff to go after versus, the, you know, the, the, the other stuff. If you put your hand up, especially with what's going on in these, that it's this time where people are dying, you know, quite regularly for different things, and we know mainly what they're dying for, they don't know mm. whether you're even around or not. So they're not going to yeah. put somebody on your case because that costs them money. That's an investment they're making in coming after you. So mm. a lot of the time there, tipping your hand by replying is the wrong thing to do. And simply mm. not replying is the easiest way to get a remedy. So there's yeah. a good example of where if you were to maybe do something like that, not that I'm saying you would, you, you might find similar situations. It's almost like a right to remain silent in a, in a manner of speaking, isn't it? I mean, I remember saying on a live stream a few weeks ago now when I looked into this because I tend to spend at least a couple of days solid just researching before live streams okay that's why you know this is my job now and, and donations are, are awesome and it really helps but the fundamental thing is when i looked at the magistrate court since september of last year they were already three hundred and fifty thousand cases behind backlogged this is at september so what has happened between september and now loads of stuff and it's probably going to be over half a million now i would guess and how the hell are they going to just go back in time and go through them? And they're just getting stuff, court appearance and stuff coming up all the time. And, you know, like you say, the people are leaving their positions. They're laying people off. The whole system does seem to be crumbling. It is, it is crumbling. If you look at it that way, yeah. Even with the councils, I mean, there are so many. Not, I mean, there are more not paying, I would say, now than perhaps there are for varying reasons. But again, it's the same principle. They're inundated. They can't cope with the sheer influx of stuff coming in. Yeah. So we have wins with council tax where we haven't even gone to court. We had one two weeks ago where we'd, um, we'd noticed the court, we'd noticed the council, we got proof that they didn't have any liability orders. Um, long story short, served the caution notice, and in the end, the CEO emailed the individual that we're helping and said, oh, we made a mistake. There wasn't a hearing and there wasn't a liability order, so you can consider that matter closed. And the only reason that happened, we had everything on that CEO that were banged to rights. And our next move would have been to bring a claim. So they backed off. So it's just about knowing what you're doing and going on the fight. And can I just mm. address a few quick points that I've just seen in the chat? That's yeah, go for it, dude. Absolutely, yeah. So some, some people are asking regularly, if I, do I pay council tax? The answer to that is no. Um, somebody's asked, can you prove it? How? You tell me how I'm supposed to prove that and I'll prove it. I don't know how you would want to do that. If you think mm. you're going to get the council to write you a nice little letter saying, oh, you don't have to pay anymore, that ain't going to happen. Um, so you don't pay because they don't chase you anymore or you get an outright winning court. Mm. Tomorrow, there is a big case in Westminster. You're all welcome to come. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and it is all about the obligation argument. And we've gone in. This is the fourth hearing now. And this is D-Day. Um, we've rebutted wow. their last um, uh, skeleton argument. They have nowhere to go with it. So it's going to be a big day and we'll see what happens. So... There could be some precedent set tomorrow. Who knows? But we'll let you know about it. That's it's real synchronicity, isn't it? I literally, I had no idea that this was happening tomorrow. Yeah, it's I mean, so, so cool. <laughs> Make sure we get your beauty sleep. I don't you up here all night worrying about this stuff, man. That's a well, big on, day. On that note, I've, I have got to go in a bit because I need to get myself, uh, you know. Yeah, 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 absolutely, dude. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, it's been awesome. Seriously, I mean. You know, if you want me back, I'm more than happy to come back again if that's... Uh, yeah yeah i mean what do you think guys do you want to see um gavin come back um if you do whack it in the chat and also if you're watching the replay put it in the comments as well and we'll do our best to schedule a date and um maybe get some updates of um 
what's going down tomorrow and maybe some new things that are coming in because like we said earlier april fool's day they're up in the council tax and i wouldn't put it past them if they tried to do some sort of payment scheme because i think a lot of people are seriously putting out there that they are struggling financially okay so i've got a sneaky feeling that something like that is going to be coming out um in the next financial year so from april there's going to be some sort of thing because how can they expect you know people to pay this extra five percent on top of everything else that's going on and um i i do remember seeing i think it was in a video um, i watched today when i was doing some research into this and i think it was um a snapshot of something i saw where they said um paying your council tax is more important than paying anything else and i was like well that was from a council that i saw on instagram i literally went on instagram went on search and i put council tax went through all of them and i found this thing and yeah some council forgive me i forget which one it was they were saying council tax is more important than any utility bill and anything else you have to make sure that that is paid and i'm thinking whoa they seriously want their money don't they Nuts. they absolutely do can i just before i go is it okay i've just seen laura and nina hide by the way laura um you just said i think gavin's selling lies here is not part of or has nothing to do or anything to do with peacekeepers you're um you're wrong on the lies part um you're right on the part that i, I don't have anything to do with peacekeepers i never have done i refer people mm. to them all the time tomorrow's mm. case is actually um the mckenzie friend on that uh, is a guy called randolph randolph acts as a mckenzie friend with us too um he's quite class close with um, mark horn and um randall randolph is a mckenzie friend because his friend george that's whose case it is and george is somebody that, that we commonly talk to as well and he actually mm. turned up as a witness at our other cases so hopefully that answers that uh, nina i'm not telling lies but we do stand on the same obligation argument and mm. um, yeah which you pointed out earlier on didn't you so that's cool exactly that. so yeah i'm not i'm not saying i've got anything to do with peacekeepers i don't but i do refer people to them all the time yeah wicked okay then mate so yeah if you've got to get going that's absolutely cool did you want to say something before you shoot off and then um, we can wrap this up and let the guys um have a bit of research into this like i said before gavin goes real quick there's a link to that youtube video which i saw which led to all of this live stream and it's half an hour seriously watch it okay and share it as well i'm not on facebook and all the rest of it but share it more people see that video the more people are going to start asking questions and just quickly before we finish this it doesn't matter who inspires you to ask questions it's important that you ask the questions it doesn't matter if there's anything going on if it inspires you to ask questions go for it it's absolutely awesome mate, isn't it that's what people should do question bloody everything it's a different world when you realize <laughs> ain't that the truth oh i'll just say to laura one more bit I, I speak to randolph as if i've never seen him supported I'm a, I've, I've been on two calls with Randolph today, Laura, and Randolph helps us with a lot of our cases. Uh, so I'm not lying. I've got nothing to hide. I'm not here <clears> doing anything <throat> wrong, by the way. I know Randolph. I wouldn't say it if I didn't. Um, he supports us in the way that he does. And by the way, I love your stuff too, Laura. There you go. How sweet is that? Brilliant. So, guys, okay, then, everybody. So that's, that's um, the end of the live stream tonight. I just wanted to get it out there. And it does look like by glancing at the comments that lots of people are banging into this so yeah it looks like um they want you back mate so pff, nice job thank you Work. if you want i can talk about maybe i don't know debt matters uh all anything you want to know about debt, we can go into that too yeah well what i do is i'll try and do i try my best to do like a weekly newsletter from my website so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put um like a poll as it were or do some sort of poll on youtube to see what topics people are going to be interested in and there's a, a a myriad mate in there of um how people can stop taking part in this game for certain things and Absolutely. eventually once you're fully empowered i'm guessing you know the more things you're going to stop taking part in so the more time freedom and money you're going to actually get for yourself by going through these processes is learning and just bigging yourself up and just marching forward which is what we all should be doing really in it mate exactly that Absolutely. Be yeah wicked uh, do I need to share any links here or do I give them to you? How does this stuff work? I think someone's just asking for links. Links? Like links um, and stuff. I don't know how you how you normally I've never done Oh, that. I've got no idea. I'll tell you what, if you e if you email me links, uh, mate, I can drop them underneath this video anytime. Okay, so um yeah. all right. That'd be the best way, guys. If you need information, I'm only dropping as much as I can 
in the description box underneath this video. So please check back daily and hopefully the links that you're going to need will be there. Okay. If not, there's an email address like I've got at the bottom of the screen there. Send me an email, chase me up a bit, and I will get through them. I'll get in hundreds of emails a day. It's bonkers. But I'm trying my best. So anyone who's donated is is awesome. Anyone who is moderating is awesome. Everyone who's entered the chat is awesome. And obviously, you guys spending your time watching the replay are awesome too. So wicked. We'll say goodbye to Gav. See you later, mate. Thank you, guys. See you soon. All right. Cool. Bye. -bye. Nice one, buddy. Right. So that's that is um Gav, and um yeah, absolutely awesome. And um, like I said, the link to his stuff underneath this video. Please check it out. And we're gonna do our best to have him back on ASAP. All right. So that is super cool. So you guys take care. Thanks for watching and stay funky.